Welcome to Webinar Wednesday, Discover the Truth About Your Market with the Google AdWords Keyword Tool. So, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Dr. David Wank. I'm the president of Short Hills Design LLC, which is a web development, SEO, and social media and AdWords firm for dentists and physicians. And I'm also a practicing general dentist in New York City. And I see patients five days a week. Here's my contact information. Obviously, you know, we'll have that up at the end for you, and you can always catch me uh, via email, but I'll put this up at the end. Okay, let's do our presentation overview. We're going to do about a five-minute introduction, then we're going to talk briefly about the web design workflow. We're then going to do about a 15-minute overview of SEO, because I need you to understand why we're doing what we're doing. Um, then we're going to do about 20 minutes with the keyword tool, then I'll open it up for some questions. All right, so our introduction. So what you need for this presentation is just basic computer knowledge. That's it. So let's move on. Okay, so the recording will be available a few days after the presentation. You'll be receiving a thank you email for attending. And if you are just joining us now late, or if you have to run, certainly email me if you'd like a copy of the slides, but you will be getting a recording of the presentation, uh, a link via your email. Uh, in terms of questions, you can raise your hand. You can use that feature to raise your hand if you have a question. Um, but I do want to keep it to 45 minutes. Um, so I'll stay after the webinar to answer questions if you have them. Um, also, we have a private Facebook group. It used to be our Google Plus group. Uh, and now we are we moved it to Facebook because that's easier to get to now. And we're not really talking about Google Plus anymore. So that is our Facebook group, shorthillsdesign.com slash FB group. There's a link there. It's limited to dentists and dental staff members and very, very few marketers. It's not designed to be a sales group. It's designed for us to be able to bounce questions off each other and learn from each other. So the take home message for tonight is the AdWords keyword tool has two major uses. The first use is that you can use it to optimize an organic search campaign. We're gonna talk about paid versus organic in a moment. And it can also be used to help determine if the people in your area are interested in what you're selling. So, and at that point, you can really start to think about it for content production. So let's talk about the web design workbook for dentists. Now, I'm not selling books tonight. The book is a book that I wrote because everybody asked me the same questions all the time about web development. It's the same book I'd like to write for my patients that say, you know, why does my, why do my teeth hurt when it's windy out and I smile? You know, I could have a book about that and keep it on the desk because everyone asks me that all the time. So the reason I'm bringing it up is because in that book, I've got my web design workflow. And whenever you're doing anything, it's critical to understand where in the process we are, where, where this AdWords and where these keywords fit in. So briefly, phase one is the most critical part. Um, you can have all the Facebook and AdWords and social media you want, but without a website acting as your hub, you're going to be missing out. So phase one, that like you see at the top here, is initial website planning, setup, and development. It is critical that you build your website to Google standards. Now, Google standards are not a secret. There's no mystery meat. There's nothing strange in there. And nobody has a special relationship with Google. And it's not a secret. Google has said, this is what our standards are. And you need to meet them because all of this is about competition, as you're going to see. If you're the only person in the country with a page about um, you know, the web design workflow, then you will rank first, whether it's a terrifically built page with everything modern and responsive design, or it's a page that has some flash in it, which you don't want to do, that looks like it was built in 1997, that loads slowly and doesn't work on mobile. At the end of the day, Google wants to give you the best page possible as the visitor, and they give you this, they give you these standards because they want their users to have the best experience and probably to generate ads and make money, but that's a side note. So phase two is where we are today. That's search engine optimization, social media, AdWords, pay-per-click, same thing, website marketing. Anything that you do to drive traffic to your website, that is phase two. And I, I joke when I lecture, I don't care if you stand outside you know, with a pirate hat on and a, and, a, and a patch over your eye. If that sells cosmetic cases, then do it. So whatever you do that works for you, that is what, that is what sells, that is what drives traffic. And of course, phase three, which a lot of people tail off on is, are we doing any analytics or tracking and conversion optimization? It's a different subject for a different day. But what's the point of having 100 people visit your website 
if you don't know if any of them became new patients. So let's move ahead now. So the keyword tool. So the real purpose of this is designed to help you research AdWords campaigns. Google wants you to spend money on ads, obviously, and they want to give you a tool that makes it easy to find keywords that people are searching for. There's no point running an AdWords, you know, pay-per-click campaign for a keyword nobody's searching for. And so therefore you'll get frustrated and you'll go somewhere else for marketing. Therefore, they give you a tool so you can see, get an estimate of what people are doing and what they're looking for. And we're going to take advantage of that tonight. Limitations. It's limited to data for paid search only. Now, this is yes and no of a problem. Google used to give us organic data, but they don't anymore, which is very disappointing. That being said, there are other ways to get organic data. But in general, the AdWords keyword tool really is a good way to get a, a pulse on what's going on. And everybody is limited to the same data. You know, none of us can actually, uh, you know, drive a car that goes 200 miles an hour, you know, if you're driving across the country. So everyone has that limitation. We all have to stick at 55 or 65. But there is no, you know, there's no, um, everyone's stuck in the same pot, so to speak. So again, our major uses, we're going to optimize an organic campaign. And we can determine what thing people are looking for and write content with that. And I'm going to explain right now how that part fits in. So. Let's do an express primer in SEO. The goal of SEO, which is search engine optimization, is to drive traffic to your website to get new patients, period. SEO, as you can see here in this diagram, is one of many things, many tools that you will use to drive traffic. So whether it's SEO, or I don't have it here, pay-per-click, like AdWords, or social sites, any of this, or if you, um, you, know, you sponsor the local football team or you sponsor a charity or whatever it happens to be, whatever you're doing to drive traffic to your website, that is bringing them to your website so you can generate leads and hopefully get new patients. That's the goal. Now, again, you look here and you say, I don't even know what this icon is. This is Vimeo. This is Pinterest. And this doesn't mean that you have to use these. Uh, I can't tell you, I've had people say, you know, Dr. Wang, I spend a thousand dollars a month on Facebook. Is that good? My answer is I have no idea. You know, do you get a thousand patients for your thousand dollars? That's terrific. Uh, so if you spend ten thousand dollars and get a hundred thousand dollars worth of business, that's great. If you spend a dollar and get ten thousand of business, that's great. So again, it all depends what works for you. And same thing, you know, a lot of the pedo offices I work with do a lot more Facebook, a lot more, uh, you know, Pinterest and Instagram. So again, I would spread your wings as wide as possible and see what works for you. But what works for your office might not work for somebody else's office. There were oral surgeons that I know who actually gasp, have ads in the yellow pages still. And if you told somebody that tonight I talked about yellow pages, they tell you that I'm, I'm crazy. But hey, if, if that's what works for their demographic and for these practices, then do it. So again, all of this is phase two, and that goal is to drive people to your website to get new patients. So paid search and organic search, two types of search. Paid search is where you say to, and here in this case, Google. Google, when someone searches for this particular keyword that I'm interested in, please put my ad there. And someone clicks on that ad, you pay Google, and that person winds up on your website on a specific page. Organic search is non-paid, and it's based on what's on your website. So let's take a look. So here's an example. So the keyword I used here at the top, you can see, is used car dealer. Notice the keyword is not a word per se. You could put used, but that's for car, but certainly a key phrase is really more appropriate, but we all call it keywords. So paid search you can see here is in yellow and on the side over there. That's almost always where it goes. Google's trying to figure out more places to put these ads, but that's where they are. And notice, so I used used car dealer because I was at a lecture once in an area and I did this live and someone came up and they had reviews that weren't so great, so we don't do that. But for used car dealer, what this means here is that somebody said, these companies said, hey, Google, if someone searches for a used car dealer, can you please put our ad front and center? And how these ads get ranked and how these ads get in order, again, different story for a different day. But that's paid search. Contrast that with organic search. So these, and yeah, they're at the bottom here in this case, but these are people who, these are web pages that when someone did a search for a used car dealer, Google said, okay, these are the most relevant pages uh, that we have in our in our database, so to speak, here to bring up for the organic search. 
And so that's, again, how we do organic search is, again, another topic, but just understand you can't manipulate organic search by giving Google money. Um, you can't really manipulate paid search by giving them extra money, but certainly money does talk when it comes to, um, to pay-per-click, especially when you get to keywords such as AdWords, excuse me, such as implants, which you can see up to $15 a click in some metro areas. So search engine optimization, it's the sequential process we're gonna use to rank a web page for a particular topic, period. Um, and that is, again, because we want to drive traffic to our website. It's one of the ways we're going to do that. And this is what I call the marketing arms race. And I got that from a client of mine who said, every time I do one thing, I have to do another. And unfortunately, that's really what happens here. Uh, 10, 15 years ago, you have digital x-rays. That's something you could market as, I'm exceptional. I knew I have digital x-rays. Today, it's almost detrimental if you don't have digital x-rays. Uh, you know, I, know I personally like wet film better. But regardless, it's no longer a selling point. So what else can we sell? You know, we're going to sell Cerex, same-day crowns, whatever it happens to be. So what we're going to do here for an example, and then we're going to get to the keyword tool, is we're going to talk about how to get, let's say, an Invisalign page ranked in search engines. So obviously, the first thing we want to do if you want to rank for Invisalign is to have an Invisalign page. That's key. So if you have an Invisalign page and your competitors don't, you win. And so, again, let's assume we have a web page about Invisalign. We want to rank it well in search engines. And, right, so if you don't already have a page about it, you're invisible. So you're not in the conversation. Which is why when someone comes to me and says, you know, hey, David, I want to rank for implant dentures. If you don't have an implant denture page, you're not going to rank. Uh, I have, you know, I, I have, excuse me, clients and um, who have pages for all on four. Uh, now, there's probably not a ton of searches in the area for all on four, but if their competitors have an all on four page, they are kind of behind the ball without it. So to break even, they've got to have an all on four page. And so what I tell people is building a website to Google standards at a minimum lets you break even. It lets you be in the conversation. Um, I usually talk about my son's little league team. If the kids don't have a helmet, they can't pick up a bat. So certainly here, they are not in the conversation. And I don't know who's going to come for tryouts with the helmet or not. So I'm going to send my kid with a helmet so he's in the conversation. Same thing here. So if you want to rank for, you know, implant dentures, if you don't have an implant denture page, make one now. And here again, we're talking about Invisalign. So we're Invisalign. You've got one page on the subject. You know, you're in Mile City, Montana. It's very easy to rank. You're the only page, you know, in Montana about Invisalign. So we're in Mile City you'll most likely rank first for Invisalign and you're great. And then you're done. You know, at that point, if you're ranking well for the keywords that you have and no one else wants to rank for that subject, uh, you're done. You have an Invisalign page. You don't necessarily have to do keyword research. You rank well from Invisalign. You know that through because you're getting calls for it, obviously. Proof is in the pudding. And when you look at analytics, you can see that too. Um, as an aside, I'm doing an analytics webinar one Wednesday, um, Next month, you can actually go to the website to shorthillsdesign.com under webinars and see what we have coming up and certainly make suggestions. One of the more exciting ones we have coming up is I'm going to show you how to use Lightroom to edit clinical photos, to clean them up and resize them for the web. So one page on the subject is easy to rank. Now, let's say we're trying to rank for Invisalign Los Angeles. I'll tell you now that's too broad a keyword, but let's go with it as an example. So let's say you have 20 competitors with a page about Invisalign. It's going to be very, very difficult to rank. Let's take a look at that visually. So here are some presidents, and you can see, let's say you're Dr. Fillmore. You've got a website built to Google Standards, and you have 20 competitors who've done the same thing. Now what do you do? So obviously the next question, of course, is how does Google differentiate among all of you? How do, why, does, why does Jefferson get to be third, Tyler's 10th, and Pierce's 14th? Again, I, I keep saying this. It's a conversation for another day. That's how organic search works. But for all things being equal, we can assume that all these dentists have a website built to Google standards and they've optimized their page for Invisalign Los Angeles. So we've done that. And now you have an Invisalign page and it ranks 14th out of 20 pages for Invisalign. So now what are we going to do? So now we're going to use the keyword tool to see what are people searching for about Invisalign? What are the most frequently searched keywords? Now, certainly if this is a minor procedure that you do. Um, you know, I'm not going to tell you to spend the money. 
to have someone do this or do this on your own for comprehensive keyword research for something like hygiene. Uh, unless you are, you know, do some exceptional hygiene program, you want to search for that, that's fine. But you don't have to do this for your, um, you know, your bio page or for your patient information page. Certainly you could do it for your dental insurance page. I want to know who has the most insurance, you know, if Delta is the most popular insurance that you take, or if you're a physician, you know, an Oxford Guardian is the most popular insurance you take, I'd write a page about that. But in any case, all things being equal, we have competition on a subject we do want to get patients for, we're going to use the keyword tool. So let's take a look. So I've done an example. So here we've done some keyword research, and here's what we found. So for Invisalign Dentist Los Angeles, and again, I made this up, 50 searches a month. Invisalign Cost Los Angeles, five. Invisalign Teen, two. So what's our conclusion? Well, obviously, on the subject of Invisalign, people in Los Angeles want to, they, they are searching for Invisalign Dentist Los Angeles. So if I think, well, probably, maybe they should really be searching for uh, Dentist Invisalign Los Angeles or Los Angeles Invisalign Dentist. It's the same thing, right? Well, yes and no. But at the end of the day, if 50 people are searching for the keyword this way, we're going to go retrofit your website for the keyword in that manner, right? Because I want to get in front of as many searches as possible. If you rank first for Invisalign Discount Plan LA, who cares? Uh, I'm glad that you rank first for that, but if there's no search volume, then it doesn't really help you. So what we did here is we have Invisalign Dentist Los Angeles, 50 searches a month. Notice that Invisalign Los Angeles, our original target keyword, isn't even on the list. So as I said, it doesn't matter if we rank for that. There's nobody searching for it. So the keyword we want to look at, though, now is Invisalign Dentist Los Angeles, because obviously it has the most search volume. We want to put ourselves in front of what people are searching for. So we're going to optimize our page to incorporate that. Great. And so now we're done, right? Well, yes, we could be done. And if no one else is doing that, then we're done. But now what happens, though, if all of these other dentists have seen this webinar, they've done the same thing, and they've optimized it as well? What do you do? Well, that's when you start to run into a problem because there's, there's other things you can do. But in general, once you have a website to Google standards, you have, um, you know, you've optimized your page for these specific keywords. There's not much more you can do to move up and down for these specific keywords. So what you can do is use the other keywords that you discovered and write content about it. So let's take a look at that. So here we go. So here's the rest of it. Notice I changed this to Invisalign Cost Los Angeles. So you can see here, we went ahead and took our Invisalign page, made it Invisalign Dentist Los Angeles, 50 searches a month. And you can see, you know, we'll be Van Buren, we'll be Jackson now. We're one of seven. All right. That was certainly better than when we were back here at, uh, you know, Dr. Pierce is one of 14, whatever it happens to be. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use what we call the long tail keywords, the other one. Over here, Invisalign Cost Los Angeles has five searches a month. Okay, well, it's better than nothing. And that might sound, well, why waste my time? Because here's why. Let's make a page about Invisalign Cost Los Angeles. And let's make another page about Invisalign Teen Los Angeles. Um, and again, so maybe it's really only seven searches a month total. But hey, that's seven more searches than we had before, you know, that we're getting, that we know people are looking for. Because, um, you know, it's easy to write an Invisalign cost page or an implants cost page, and certainly you don't give the cost. But you can say, you know, many people ask Dr. Wank about the cost of Invisalign here in Los Angeles, and we'll tell you blah, 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 blah. And you don't have to, you know, get very complicated. Write what comes naturally out of your brain. When I tell people to write blog posts, that's what I tell them. Pretend you're talking to a patient. If I ask you to write me an article about, uh, you know, all ceramic crowns, many of our colleagues will say, I didn't go to dental school to write content. If I say we're at a cocktail party and say, hmm, I have these crowns I want replaced, what can you tell me about all ceramic crowns? All of us will be talking till next Friday, so a week from Friday. So certainly that's a way to do it. Now, again, so what I'm doing here is I said, you know, we, we, we got the list of the keywords that are popular and we took the most populous one and we retrofitted it to our Invisalign page. Certainly, if it were Invisalign cost, I might say make a dedicated page about that. You don't want to, you don't want, you don't want to, um, you know, destroy a page you already have if it's not really relevant. So, like if Invisalign discount plan had 100 searches a month, I'd have an Invisalign page and an Invisalign discount page. 
So again, you've done this, and if everyone else has done this, at least now, you're, you're one out of seven, which gives you a chance. But the more you work with these long tail keywords here, um, what if this were 25 and this is 12? You know, you're putting yourself there in front of more of an audience by doing what people search for. And I, and I just, it frustrates me when someone guesses um, and says, you know, Dr. Wank, I had a call. And, um, you know, they say, Dr. Wank, I didn't rank for family dentists in my area and I'm terrified. Well, how many people search for that? I don't know. So what are you worried about? And so that's kind of where I want you to think that to let's get in front there with the, with the most popular keywords and use the rest for writing content. And what that's going to do, again, that marketing arms race, it's going to put you in a position to be competitive. So at a minimum here, at a minimum, you're on the same page with your competition. At a maximum, you win, so to speak. But at a minimum, you're at least, again, you got your helmet and you're on the playing field. So we're going to take a minute now. We're going to go to the screen share. And then um, I see we do have a question that we're going to take, again, towards the end. So let's take a minute now and jump to the screen share. All right, and then we're going to, all right, let us show Google Chrome. And now you should be seeing my AdWords panel, and you are, good. Okay, so what you do is you navigate to Google AdWords, and once you're in AdWords, what you're gonna do is you're gonna look for the, um, oh, I'll show you. What you're gonna do is, when you get in there, they're gonna ask you to pick an account, and you'll pick your account, and under campaigns, you don't have to create a campaign. Um, you can consider creating one. Google AdWords will be much happier with you if you do create a campaign. It will give you better. It'll give you better data. So, uh, in any case, let's go ahead here and let us now go to our campaigns. Let us create one real quickly. Let's do search network only on our test account. You can create an account, do a campaign, and again, I can do a more thorough review of this at some point if anybody would like. Uh, I can certainly do a screencast, a quick one, on how to make a um, a campaign. Blah, 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 blah. And I, let's just do it $5 per day, save and continue. Because Google's not going to give you as good data if you don't have um, set up a campaign. Okay, so let's go ahead now and go to tools. We're going to come here to the keyword planner. So again, when you set up that campaign, I have, you know, they already have my credit card on file here. But don't worry if they ask you to set up a credit card because they assume you're going to be so happy that they're going to want to do that. So let's go ahead here and search for um, let's let's set up a campaign or let's set up a keyword search. So let's do this. Let's try very small first. Dentist Short Hills, New Jersey. And the web page I have is SH Dental Group. It's not a real website. I mean, it is a real website. I made for a webinar uh, or, or lecture a long time ago, but it's not a real practice. And I happen to know that a dental, dentists and dental surfaces. All right, so let's come in here and let's just first target Short Hills, New Jersey. It's a small little area and let's take a look and see. The zip code is 07078. And notice it doesn't find Short Hills. So I just clicked advance and let's go again here to Short Hills, New Jersey. And it's not finding anything. So what do I do? I'm going to take a bigger step out. Let's go to Milburn, New Jersey. Now, Milburn, New Jersey, Short Hills is part of Milburn, and you can argue that back and forth, but Google thinks it's Milburn, so that's fine. So now we have Milburn as our location. Let's click Done. And let's say, let's get rid of this, and let's save that. The rest of the settings you can leave the same. Let's get some ideas. So what I'm going to do first is let's see Dentist Short Hills, New Jersey. And you can see here, well, the average monthly searches are here. So let's search by average monthly searches. And 10, didn't, let's make it sort the right way, please. Okay, sorry about that, a little delay. All right, Milburn Pediatrics, That's I, I know them, that's not a dentist. And so, hmm, not getting really much what I want. So let's, what if I just did dentist short hills? And again, I am using my brain here, I'm not, you know, I have no secrets of why I'm of how I'm doing this. I'm just thinking. Again, I'm not getting much. Let's take a look though under the comp under suggested bid and see if anybody's actually paying for these keywords. Holistic. Okay, there's looks like there's some interest in holistic dental. Looks like the keywords are about Milburn. So now we're starting to get an idea of again not a ton of searches, but there seems some interest in holistic dental care. That's interesting. 
Millburg, New Jersey dentist. All right, keywords to consider. So let's go ahead now and do, let's do dentist Milburn and see how that goes. And let's go to our, do we, let's process that, go to our average monthly searches and see what we have. Um, again, getting somewhere, but nothing spectacular. And holistic, again, okay. So let's try something else now. Let's go. So we know that Milburn is a better area to search than Short Hills. Obviously, I want to go to the, you know, the smallest area possible. If my zip code is, you know, 07078 in Short Hills, then I want to attract dentists, uh, clients in 07078. Uh, and the problem is, is that Google doesn't really understand, at least organically, that you could be in, you know, in a town in, in Short Hills and you can throw a baseball to be in Milburn. And so they don't, they don't get that you can get patients from multiple areas. So... All right, so let's do this. So let's take a look. Um, how about let's do Invisalign. Invisalign Milburn. And no, not much. Not let's see. Get ideas. Let's see here. And again, you might have you know a, a larger metro area or smaller metro area, but at the end of the day. If this is what I want you to start doing to get to get an idea of what's going on. And it's not really doesn't really want to give me many ideas. Oh, here we go. Invisalign Milburn. Nothing. All right. See, and I would have thought Invisalign Milburn is a good idea because why not? So let's do dental implants. Let's try that. Dental implants. Now, remember, I'm not going to add a town because I told Google already. Remember here when we did our targeting. I told them that I want to do Milburn. So they've already said it. I certainly don't want to know across the country about dental implants. I want to know in this area. And let's see, let's look at our average monthly searches. Hmm, oh, cost of veneers, that's interesting. Dentist near me, uh, pediatric dentist near me, interesting. Cost of veneers, so hey, listen, you know, we're walking through here and I don't know if I would make this the focus of, of a campaign, but certainly a blog post about the cost of veneers. You know, the idea is that, look, you can't tell because there's 10 searches, but if someone's paying that much money for it, then certainly it might be worth trying to compete, again, organically for free. And I say organic because you're going to write a blog post about the cost of veneers. And you're not going to say veneers are $1,500 a pop. You're going to talk about why they cost what they cost. So, all right. Now let's go ahead now and let us go a little bit broader. Because, again, we might get some more data. So let's go nearby. Now remember I told you, you know, what if you're right here on the map? This is the border of Summit. Or if you're here, that's the border of Maplewood. So let's go ahead and add Summit. Let's add Maplewood. Where is Maplewood? Did it run away? Let's add Maplewood and let's add um, Springfield because we're there. Again, the, the further out we go with our search, the less specifically relevant it's going to get. But again, I don't think people in these neighboring towns really have a different, that different view of, you know, of, of what services. So now we're getting a little bit better here. So let's do dental implants. Let's take a look and see. Sometimes we can't tell when it refreshes. Let's do that. Get ideas. Doesn't seem to want to refresh its search. So let's go back then here. Let's go back just to dentist and see. There we go. And again, I'm looking at Springfield, Maplewood, Summit, and Milburn. Look at this, no insurance dentist, but no one's searching for that. Take a look at our average monthly searches now. Okay, braces, 50 searches a month, veneers, 50, root canal, teeth whitening, wisdom teeth. So now we're starting to get an idea, lumineers. People are searching for, now obviously it's estimated, but look, what if, you, if you're working with lumineers, as I said, make a dedicated page about lumineers, um, or if you have a veneer page and you do lumineers also, write a blog post about lumineers. It can't hurt. Let's search by the suggested bid and let's take a look and see. Best teeth whitening. That's interesting. $42, $42 a click. So that means if you have, if you tell AdWords that you want your ad to show when someone searches for best teeth whitening, it will cost you $40 if someone clicks that, whether or not they become a patient. So, but here, so I would certainly write about that. Best teeth whitening. Invisible braces, write a page about it. So we're starting to get an idea here Again, not as many searches for it, but we're getting an idea of what people are looking for. 
So let's actually take a look now at Invisalign. So I want to see in particular, now that we have a broader area, what people are looking for. And you can, you know, you can change all the parameters here. But suffice it to say, uh, we did Invisalign, get ideas. And that should let us do that. Let's just look at our, um, see, it's interesting. The suggested bid for braces is very high. So what this can tell you is, if you want to do AdWords for braces or related services in these areas, it's going to cost you a lot of money, which is neither here nor there, but that's something to think about. So let's go ahead. I just want to see the average monthly searches. Let that do that for us. And again, nothing jumping out, but it's certainly, all right, braces, veneers, Invisalign alternative. All right, so now I want to get some more ideas. So what I'm going to do is, Let's go ahead and let's broaden where we are even more. So we're going to go to nearby and let's just go all of Essex County. Let's see if that changes. So you see what I'm doing? I am getting a rough idea. So now let's see. Let's see if, you know, CEREC is popular. Let's see if anybody is searching for CEREC in um, these areas. Let's just look here, make sure we have it. It didn't add those. Let's add those. Let us add... Essex County, and we're going to add Mars County and Union County. We're broadening our horizons there. All right, and let's save those changes. And so here we go. Let's see if anyone's searching for CEREC. I'm doing same day crowns with CEREC. Is it worth, well, notice how I have a lot more numbers now, because again, I am getting an idea. Gingivitis now pops up. Uh, implantation, it's not for us. Gum disease, dental, dentures, cosmetic dentistry. So you start to get an idea here now of what people are searching for. And Google said, look, there's nothing here about CEREC, 10, so not really. Um, but hey, here are some other ideas. And that's why this is great. So you're seeing what people are searching for. And again, it's not an exact number. And I'm not going to tell you to optimize for dentist, but certainly have an Invisalign page. Certainly it's worth having a root canal page, a veneer page. Um, I might call my page braces. I might take an orthodontics page and call it orthodontics. I'll call it braces and then mention orthodontics. Same thing with teeth whitening. Now let's take a look at the suggested bid. This is always interesting. So you can look here. It's interesting because poor souvenirs cost is $21 a click, um, but only 20 searches a month. Clear braces and dental implants. Here we go. So clear people here are looking for, you know, if you want to do braces or orthodontics in this area, what I would tell you is have a, a page about orthodontics and say, we do a lot of different types of orthodontics, including invisible braces, write a one or two paragraph page, clear braces, one or two paragraph page, um, and braces in general. You know, so that's, so this is a way now by doing that, 720 searches for braces, 110 for clear braces, 50 for invisible braces. So what do you got there? Seven, eight, you know, almost 900 searches for braces related topics, and you've got three pages that hit those targets. So that's, and CEREC, obviously, we don't see. So that's that's definitely something that you can do. But let's modify our search. Something that you can do is you can actually put in just your landing page. So, well, here, just to show you, if you had a bunch of keywords that you think might be great, you can, uh, you can you know, put them in here and it will take a look for you. I prefer to do it the way we're doing it now. But what you can do here is let's just go ahead and modify our search because I just want to search for a new keyword or search for a new thing here. Let's just do SH Dental Group. And Google's gonna look at my page and say, you know what, based on what I see on your page, here's what we're thinking. And obviously not much. It says Family Family Dental Group is what I have. You know, it's called Short Hills Family Dental Group as part of the, the fake moniker I made up for it. Um, and I think I talk about doing a dental blog there. So there's not much here. Um, but obviously on your website that has a lot more data and a lot more pages on there, there is much more that you can do uh, to see directly from your site. But I want you to really think about, you know, when we do SEO for clients, um, what we do is we ask them what services they want to focus on. You can certainly go here and throw that in there. But if something like, uh, you know, extractions comes up and you don't like doing extractions, it's not something you do, you know, you have to decide now, well, listen, you know, I like here, let's just say, let's say this were extractions, for example, 30 a month. Well, I happen to love extractions, but a lot of our colleagues don't. And so, well, you know what? There's search volume for extractions, but if nobody wants 
you know, if everyone wants these extractions, but we don't want to sell what the people are um, looking for, that's okay too, but you have to know that, which is why, again, when you come here, you know, if you look, if we even made it, no, I wouldn't do all of New Jersey because that's too broad, but certainly you can look now for, um, let's say, um, ceramic crown. Again, you know, I'm curious, is it worth it? Oops, your landing page. Let's go here and modify our search. We're going to do ceramic crowns, and we're going to do shdentalgroup.com. Now, to get more particular, if you had a page about ceramic crowns already, you could do this as well to get it even more specific. But in general, you don't necessarily have to do that. It's just something to consider in a huge metro area. So over here, let's take a look. Ceramic crowns. And no, but again, Google is telling us that there are other better choices. And so there again, here we've got um, dentist crown, veneers, root canal, and that's kind of where we are in the big picture. So um, I've gotten through everything I want to get through a little bit on the early side. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to take a minute to go ahead and I'm going to answer some questions. If you'd like to sign off now, you're welcome to, and I thank you for attending. I'm glad it went faster than we expected. Um, you will be getting an email from me tomorrow or so. A thank you email, and then we'll be following up with a copy of the recording so you can go back and watch it. If you have questions, feel free to get a hold of me. Email is the best way. Always go to shorthillsdesign.com. And don't forget to visit uh, the Facebook, shorthillsdesign.com slash FB group to join the Facebook group if you'd like. So there's a question here we're going to check out. And the question is, where do you find the keyword tool? That is a great question. And so what you're going to do to find the keyword tool is you go to google.com to do your search and type in Google keyword tool, and it should come up. Let's do that now. Google.com, and you can go AdWords, keyword, planner, keyword tool, it doesn't matter. And there you go. You're going to find the keyword planner there, and that is going to, um, you know, obviously I have an account there, so it's giving me our data where I left off, but certainly that's how you would get there. I'm going to take another question. Oh, no, that question was answered. Great. Okay. So can you use multiple found keyword phrases? Okay. So the other question is, can you use multiple found keyword phrases on the same page? And the answer, that's a great question, and the answer is yes. However, here's the problem. Um, so what we said before Invisalign. Invisalign Dentist Los Angeles and Los Angeles Invisalign Dentist, to us as humans, that is certainly the same keyword. And Google will tell you, this is all about semantic search and people's intent, so don't go make a page that says Invisalign Dentist LA. LA Invisalign Dentist, Dentist LA Invisalign. So, because that's all one, one idea. So yeah, so what I would do is, when you're using the multiple found keywords, the multiple found keywords, what I want you to do is, Look and see. And if you happen to come up with uh, Invisalign Dentist Los Angeles with 50 searches and Los Angeles Invisalign Dentist with three, you can certainly incorporate both of those. But that's how that would work. I would focus more on the higher ranking one, you know, the 50 a month, and incorporate the others. And it's really going to be your judgment whether or not to make a separate page. Separate topic, I'd make a separate page. And obviously, if you're not sure, email me and I'll be happy to give you some advice. So the next question is, I assume a separate page is better than a blog post with too many pages as your navigation get difficult. Great question. So a separate, a page or a blog post is the same thing. Google doesn't care, honestly, about a page or a blog or a blog post per se. It's something semantic that we do as humans. Blog came from where, you know, you had a page that said, this is David's blog. And my about page was, David is a dentist and he does this and this and this. And the blog was, hi, I'm in New York today. Here's a picture of the Empire State Building. And then, hi, now I'm in London. Here's Big Ben. So the blog conceptually was designed for you to, for people to expect, hey, this is content that gets updated more often. But as far as Google is concerned, there's no, um, it doesn't matter either way. And yeah, with too many pages, your navigation can get difficult, which is why it's important to make sure you really structure your navigation well in a logical order, because you do want to have all of your main pages in the navigation somehow for information architecture, but no, you don't want to have 400 lists. Again, if you have a specific, specific question, email me and I can give you some advice. 
Um, but absolutely, that is something you should consider and try and keep it as simple as possible, but as broad as you need. Um, okay, someone asked, what's the Facebook group again? The Facebook group again, I'll put it here in chat, is www is www.shorthillsdesign.com slash FB group. And again, it's, um, you have to wait for a second while we, um, we have to authorize you because when I did my Google plus marketers group, we had a ton of marketers who wanted to come in and sell everybody's stuff. And that's not what this was about. So we have to screen people. Okay, next. Um, so the question is, did the keywords only work when used in a page title or can you use them in content on the page to show an organic search? Uh, that's an absolutely great question. And so, again, the answer is that's basic um, search engine optimization. If you want to optimize for Invisalign Short Hills, um, the title of your page should probably be Invisalign Short Hills. And then you're going to have a header tag in H1, Invisalign. Um, and then maybe your H2 is, um, you know, Invisalign Dentist in Short Hills. Dr. Wang practices in Short Hills, New Jersey, and blah, 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 blah. He's proud to offer many orthodontic options, including Invisalign, you know, and that kind of thing. So sneak the keyword in there, but if you just put it in the page title, it might not be enough. So don't force it. In the past, we would say, Dr. Wank is an Invisalign dentist in Short Hills, and he moved to Short Hills because he loves doing Invisalign in Short Hills, where lots of people in Short Hills love Invisalign. So that's what you don't want to do, but let it flow naturally. Um, there is, I have to find it. I have a video got a 15 minute video that I made that talks about actually how to write your blog posts with SEO in mind. So what I'm going to do is let me write a note to myself here. Um, what I'll do is I'm going to post that in the Facebook group to make it easier. So post that. So everybody doesn't have to be bothered. I'll post that in our Facebook group so you can watch that. It's going to show you how to take a single paragraph about cosmetic dentistry. That's just a blog paragraph and to format it actually for a blog post with a couple of other paragraphs that hits keywords, but that doesn't necessarily sound like it's it's forced. Now, someone had a hand raised, I think, here. Let me take a look. There was a hand raised. Is there still a hand raised? Um, yes, there is a hand raised. Okay, um, next question was, for blog, do you advise Blogger or WordPress or website itself? I wouldn't use Blogger. For whatever you're going to do, I would recommend strongly that you go ahead and that you tie your blog into your website regardless. In the past, we had Blogger. In fact, there's a popular, oh, what's it called? There's a popular service out there, Method or Mention, whatever it is, and it's basically a separate blog service from your website, and um, they're having some problems. And I can understand why, because again, you don't want people leaving your website. So the other reason, it's a couple of reasons. One, if you have a great blog article, and one of my favorites is, you can write this down. Um, also, you can, um, why are there black lines around my crowns? Or are the black lines around my crowns cavities? That's a great blog post. Um, how soon after whitening can I drink red wine? Anything your patients ask all day, these are great blog posts to think about. But if you've got that great blog post, A, I want them staying on your website to read it, to say, hey, you know what? I had a question about um, blog posts. Or I had a question about... Um, you know, I typed into Google, uh, how soon after whitening can I drink red wine? And your web page comes up because you're the only one in your area that has an article about that, which would be terrific. And then they're on your page and they say, oh, look, Dr. Such and Such, she takes my insurance or, oh, he's open on Thursdays. Terrific. I want it to be their A to drive traffic to you. And if someone's on your site, I want them staying on your site. So that's why certainly um, I would not use Blogger. Um, or a separate WordPress blog. I want your blog to be its own part of your website that's totally integrated with your website. So um, that answers all the questions that people asked. Are there any other questions before we sign off? All right, there aren't any more. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. I really appreciate that you took the time. We're only 28 seconds over the limit, so that looks great. Um, oh, wait, we have one more question. And it was about my podcast. Okay. My podcast, I did two episodes. Um, and what it does is the um, the episodes, well, let me just sign off and then I will answer the other two questions. I just had a, a Facebook group question and a podcast question. 
So again, you'll be receiving an email, a thank you email, and then another email based on, um, it'll give you the recording. So you can take a look at that. And certainly reach out to me via the contact page on the website, email me directly. Um, let me put up the, um, there's our website. I'll put that up in the background so you can find us. Um, and I think I'm gonna put my contact information up here in the background. So, oh, so the link, the link to the Facebook group is, it's right here, FB group. There you go. So that's gonna be the link there. It's also in the chat area. And what I'll do is I'm also going to put the, um, that SEO video I talked about, I'm gonna put that in the Facebook group. And then, yeah, we asked, we answered the Facebook group. Okay, the podcast. So the podcast, I did two versions of it, two articles. And what it does is the two episodes talk about here, the um, uh, phase one, it's a good 15 minutes, and phase two, another good 15 minutes that really, really walk you through conceptually what I think needs to be done and what you have to understand from, you know, from a top level. It is, and again, it's company agnostic. So even if you're going to, I don't care who you use, um, you know, we have a waiting list, you know, Dental Town knows that, a lot of people know that, but certainly I want win-win for everybody. But if you, so if you go here though, both of these podcasts are going to be company agnostic. Um, obviously, if you have other questions, if you have suggestions for other webinars, I certainly um, am open to that. I really want to give people uh, what they want to learn. Next time we're doing introduction to analytics to the dental team. We're then doing link building the month after that, using Lightroom to optimize your clinical photos. And then we're doing um, why uh, keyword-based SEO can be a one-time service. I might probably add to that one and make that one an explanation of organic SEO, which is what we said when we saw those presidents. How come these presidents ranked ahead of those presidents, even though everyone had the same keywords? So that is everything. And I want to thank you all once again for coming and for taking the time and have a wonderful evening. Thank you again.